Let me start my sermon by telling you a story of a time at my junior college in Missouri. I had enrolled in Chemistry 101. It was difficult and probably more difficult than for most because it was only offered at 8 a.m. in the morning. I was barely awake. The coffee certainly had not taken hold. And as each day rolled into a week and each week into another week and month into month, I soon began meeting with my academic advisor. She told me I was failing. That wasn't news to me. I hadn't passed the first quiz. And she said I needed to drop out of the class. Heck no. I wanted to be in that class. I needed that class. I was adamant. I was stubborn. I resisted. And as time drew on, at the last minute possible when you could save your GPA, I dropped out of the class. And there went my career in physical therapy. Jesus, God, knows our needs and he knows our doubts and struggles in life. He hears our sighs and our anguish. He hears the anger that we feel when there's no internet for four days at our household. He sees our disillusionment. He knows that there is disbelief that we will feel when we know we have to step out in faith and we're scared to do that. Jesus, God, knows all these things and he continues to walk alongside us. He always walks with us at times that are the worst in our lives. But I believe God knows how to meet my needs and that God will meet your needs too. I say this because at the beginning of the scripture today in the gospel, we read, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. One of my most favorite passages. Now, in, back in the day, the Christians or the followers of Jesus struggled with that because they were thinking he was talking about truly, literally eating his body and blood. And as 21st Christians, we know that it is what we experience at Eucharist and that Jesus died on our on his cross for our sins so that we could have salvation and we could receive his body and blood. But I believe that as Episcopalians, we're supposed to struggle with the scriptures and our doctrine. And one way to understand that passage is to think about how you experience God in your life. Where does this Holy Spirit touch you or nudge you? How does it feel to experience the Holy Spirit move through you in that aha moment? I believe Jesus, God, provides for our day-to-day activities and needs because in each of us he lives now that is hope do you struggle with believing that god takes care of us do you struggle with experiencing god in your life because he 
may feel like he is not providing for you when we know he is. How does God provide for you? How does he meet your needs? One way to think about that and to explore the answer is to look at the ordinary things and tasks you do in your day to see where God shows up. Now, God not only works in our lives individually, but in our lives as disciples of Christ. He provides for us those opportunities as much as they may be uncomfortable for us to go out and spread the gospel. Discipleship is hard, and we struggle with that. But we need to rise up, and we do rise up, to meet with those beyond these walls. And we meet their needs because God, through our outreach, meets their needs. And that is hope. Now, in recent weeks, I have shared with you sermons on the bread of life. We do the hard work of discipleship because God meets us in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine. That is hope. We do the hard work of discipleship because God meets us at worship and we become the church. And that is hope. We do the hard work of discipleship because God meets all at God's table. And that is hope. We do the hard work of discipleship because we eat, pray, love. Last week I talked about eating being a deep dive in the scriptures, praying, praying any and all the prayers from the prayer book or from the daily office of elsewhere that we pray daily. And love, we are called to love abundantly. And that is hope. Now, where was the hope in my story? My international advisor called me into her office and said, Ann, I think I've got a solution for you. She said, why don't you look into this new career path of recreation therapy? And here's the catch, folks. I did not need to take Chemistry 101. God gave me a career that I was excited about. And I've been a recreation therapist for over 30 years. Now that is hope. What are your challenges? What are your needs? How is God meeting your needs? And where is your hope? Because where there's hope, there's God. And as disciples, we can then go out and speak the truth. Amen.